Ah, he's good. Let's stand on our feet. Let's open with a word of prayer, a prayer of agreement. That means you're agreeing and you're releasing your faith. Not a, not a prayer of listening to me pray, but a prayer of agreement. Will you do that with me tonight? Come on, lift your hands and just begin to welcome him. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the name of Jesus that is above every name, every symptom, every sickness, every disease, every threat, every torment, every lie. We thank you, Father, that we know the truth and the truth we know has made us free. We've gathered in the name of the Lord, in the name of the way, in the name of the truth, in the name of the life of God. We thank you tonight so much that if we have the Son, we have life. And Father, we thank you that we have life because we have the Son, Jesus. We thank you that the same spirit that brought life back into him lives in us and we call things that be not as though they were and it's making us alive in the presence of God by the name of Jesus and by faith in God. That is the answer to everything. Have faith in God. Yeah, but what about have faith in God? Yeah, but the doctor said have faith in God. Well, what am I gonna have faith in God? Have faith in God. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. We have ears to hear. We understand and we'll respond to the word, to the word of salvation, to the word of healing, and all things that accompany and confirm our salvation. We're open to the Holy Spirit. We're open to the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the, the word of prophecy. We're open to the gifts, the manifestations of your spirit. We thank you that signs and wonders and miracles are happening in our midst, Lord, and we're blessed to be a part of it. And while our eyes are peeled open, looking for the manifestation of the miraculous because that is the normal Christian's life. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we're blessed to be here tonight. Jesus' name, can you say amen? You may be seated. Just a quick, quick, quick announcement so you'll be prepared. You'll have a, a heads up when you get here Sunday. We're gonna do a survey Sunday. Aren't we, Big Ryan? Aren't we, Miss Sandra? We're gonna do a survey. It's survey Sunday. Survey says, oh. <laughs> and there ain't gonna be no, <clears throat> no whammies, no whammies, none of that. It's a survey because, listen, we're getting ready to really update and just make some, um, some wonderful uh, adjustments in Heart Rock Cafe. Um, but we need your patience, we need your love, and we need your participation, okay? Heart Rock was not built to just do wedding uh, showers and baby showers. It was built for fellowship. And I thank you for being patient with us uh, Big Ryan and his lovely bride, Sandra, they are overseeing Heart Rock now. They had had it in their hearts. We had had it in our hearts. So we thought we'd just get with them and ask them, and it was just confirmation, and it's just been a wonderful thing. So they've been in there for about three or four weeks now, just, and they've been monitoring things for a long time. And uh, Ryan has, he, he, both of them bring a lot to the table. I don't want to get into all that right now, but they bring a lot to the table, and they're both very gifted in their areas. Uh, and so we've been doing a lot of talking and meeting together and just talking about ideas, but Survey Sunday, there's going to be a little thing in your bulletin. It's only got two lines. Don't write all front and all the back. We're not, it's not a debate or nothing. I just want to keep it real simple, and it's basically what two items would you like to see sold in Heart Rock? Okay, so you can be thinking about that. That way, Sunday morning when you get it, you can just fill it out right quick, stick it in the offering plate, and then we're just going to read over them and see what the majority is, or if you know, if we want to go with some of those ideas. But um, we would appreciate your uh, participation in that because we want to really build the fellowship of it. That's what it was about, and um, we're uh, Ryan has made some calls to uh, some other. Uh, areas of food and stuff like that and just getting some new things so we're very excited about it and it's not going to be long we're going to be expanding heart rock and and we're gonna <laughs> yeah yeah we need it you understand our children need space right now 
You understand that children are the most important ministry in Heartland Church. You, you understand that, right? That's our future. And so we're, we're looking at some things and we're excited about it. Don't want to get too much into that. But we're, we're going we're gonna to expand Heart Rock and we're going to have space for, for kids and a, a holding place for them to just play in classrooms. And, but all that requires money. But listen to me. All you need is you need a good team and God will provide the money. God never asked us to afford one thing. He asked us to believe for it. I'm a believer, are you? I'm a believer. Brother Bob, would you come up tonight? And we're ready to, I mean, I got my tithe in my wallet. It's burning a hole in my pocket. That's the way it ought to be with all of us, you know. How many of you know we are an abundant body? We are abundant in so many things. So when, when pastor mentions things that, are coming things that how many of you know our pastors have vision for us as a body if we're sitting still we're dying if we're not moving you're, you're either moving forward or you're going backwards one of the two All right, what, <laughs> it's hard not just to bust off into that it is oh my goodness Speaking of abundance, we've got uh, an abundant of men that will join us tomorrow morning, and we hope the, that we are abundantly larger than before with noblemen tomorrow morning at 6.30. Some hot coffee, some hot Jesus. It's a great time, guys. Um, it's not too late. You know, used to when I was, when I was growing up, if, you, if, you, if there was a phone call after 9 o'clock, it had better be somebody's dead. And if there's a call after about anywhere from 11 to 12, it better be a busload of dead. Because you just didn't, you didn't visit with people past 9 o'clock at night. That was just the cardinal rule. I say that to say this. Don't be afraid about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, whatever. Don't go, to, don't go to Walmart and don't start texting while Pastor Don's teaching. Uh, if there's a guy that's on your heart and you've been asking, give him a call. Shoot him a text. Remind him, hey. Come tomorrow, if you're able. And if you're able to pick them up, say, dude, I'll pick you up. Okay? It's never too late, and it's never too early. So we want to know them tomorrow morning. And then woman to woman this Sunday, you talk about abundance. Hot diggity dog. <laughs> I know it. It, it, it is. I don't, I don't get all of the details, but I know that my wife comes back grinning real big, and she says, we had a great time. <laughs> so it makes, ladies, it makes you a better friend, a better wife, a better member of the kingdom, better in your job, in that place that you're anointed and appointed to be, it just makes you better all the way around. And what's in you helps make other people better. So I would say enough on that, but anyway, never enough. 6 to 7.30 this Sunday, ladies, uh, be here. This next Wednesday, no service because the next morning is Thanksgiving, okay? And then we all know what happens Friday. It's the great holy day of shopping. <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> it's cardinal rule, I mean. So you you carve up on Thursday, and then you, I hope you've been training good because you're going to burn it up on Friday. Uh, birthdays this week were Butch Mod, Buck Moduling, July Rando, Billy Donberry, and Christy LaQuay. We've got some big ones coming up next week as well. Ecclesia, I didn't bring, I did. Hang on. I think I have my note from from Sunday. But you do have a date for your end of semester Christmas deal, which is going to December the 4th. Okay, and this is going to be at Casa de Callaway, 7 to 10. Man, man, did I? I did not. I thought I brought that. It's probably sitting. Okay. So we've got that December the 4th. Next Thursday is Thanksgiving. Next Monday we're celebrating Thanksgiving. So get with Brian and Mandy. Get hooked up on the on the Ecclesia uh, page on Facebook and get all that good stuff. And Ecclesia, for those that are staying home, 
will continue through the uh, Christmas holiday, and I, I think that's great. How many of you know that at some point in your life, when things don't go well and they consistently don't go well in a certain area, you have to decide to stop that? It's kind of like a football team out on the football field, and the team you're playing against runs really well consistently against you. You got to make a change, or they're going to stampede you all game long. Now, key to that is if you didn't train well strength training conditioning if you didn't train well in learning your assignments if you didn't train well mentally nothing you do no plan you come up with is going to stop that run a lot of times in our financial situations it's like there's holes in the boat and you've only got so many fingers and toes to plug all those holes but it's us putting holes in the boat God's not trying to steal stuff from you God's not creating havoc and chaos in your life so at some point we got to train ourselves number one don't put the boat in the water with holes in it and when you get out there make sure you keep it whole free we keep it whole free we keep our lives whole free with the word maybe I'm the maybe I'm the only one who needs to be reminded of that because it's not always just in finances it's in life we hit an area in our life and we go wow this is happening and you know what I did that I done did that. So now I've got to make a decision to undid that. So if first and foremost, we tithe. We're a tithing body. And it doesn't make a lick of sense to tell the world the way you get out of financial trouble is to give. But it works. Because the word works. And when because we're tithers... We give him what belongs to him. He rebukes the devourer. He opens the gates of heaven so much that we can't contain it in the blessing. And when we give to others, we receive a 30, a 60, a 100-fold return because the word says. Now, it's not always in your time. So remember the seed that you sow and continue to water that with the word and be prepared for the increase because we're a body of abundance. He's a God of extravagant abundance. Okay. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your extravagance, for your abundance, for your love for us. We thank you, Father, that you've translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom that you've prepared for us, Lord Father. We are covenant children. We are heirs to the kingdom, Lord. And Father, we bring the tithe to you because we love you. We honor you. And we recognize that, that you've set apart as holy, the tenth, that first, the very best that we have to, to offer, Lord Father. And we are prepared, willing, ready, and cheerful to sow seed, Lord Father. We thank you, Father, that you've rebuked Satan for our sake. That's not a job that we have to do. You are Lord of Lord and King of Kings. You are the one and only true God, Lord Father. All that we have all that we had, all that we have, and all that we will ever have comes from you, Father. And we give you the honor and glory for that. Father, we thank you that tonight, because your word has assured us that it is true and forever settled, that, Lord, the tithe tonight and the seed sown tonight, Lord, the, the seed that we sow on a daily basis, it will all be fruitful and it will all multiply. And, Lord, we thank you that what we do glorifies the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Don.
Now I'm on. I'm on. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Ty. Thank you, Pastor Jason. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You ready for tonight? I am too. I came excited. God wants to talk to us. and I'm excited what he talks to me about. But before that, I have to say that my mom and dad are watching tonight, and they're in uh, Daytona Beach where it is warm. My dad, who does have some humor, will send me, and he did. He'll say, ooh, it's so hot. This is when it was a couple of days ago. So hot. It's 74 degrees. I took a snap of, of mine. I said, this is my current situation. It's 24 degrees, wind chill factor of 14 or whatever it was. It's like, oh, it's like, rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> so thanks, Dad. <laughs> He's like, come on down. It's like, can we bring the church? <laughs> Let's have a Wednesday service on the beach, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? We could so do that. We can make it happen. We're coming. We're, we're coming. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In that one nice van, I mean, when you can stand up in a van, you've arrived. <laughs> Woohoo! Especially for me, like, we arrived. All right, y'all ready to learn? Get out your notes, get a pen, because you know the Holy Ghost is going to say something to you. This is a faith statement. This says, I'm going to know something tonight that the Holy Ghost wants to write down. I've got, some, I've, I've got something that God wants to give me, and I've got ears to hear and eyes to see. God, bring it on. Amen. We're going to talk about being assembled. What does that mean? That is a good question. But really, tonight, we're going to talk about, and we're going to break down uh, some, some basic things. I mean, Pastor Jay was talking to me about how we're getting back to the basics, we're getting back to some simplicity and I thought, wow, God, this is exactly what you're having me to do tonight. We're going to talk about, are you ready? Righteousness. Yeah, righteousness. And you're going, me too. Do you know that it's as vague as uh, uh, redemption or, or perpetuation and all that stuff? We're going to learn what does that really mean. All right? Because I've been around a long time, and when I hear that word, I go, yeah, I wonder what that really means. So let's look at this. Let's talk about what that means. Do I really know what the word is? And listen, here's the thing, what it does for me. What does righteousness do for me? Why do I need to know about it, and what can I do to, to take hold of it? So I've got my theories. So this is my theories that I've heard or I personally have done over the last 30-something years about the theories of righteousness. This one is the first one. I'm going through hell, but I'm okay with God. Because you've heard you're in right standing with God. So this is a theory of what righteousness is. This is my theory, okay? I've, I've actually experienced this. I'm going through bad time, hell. I've said it. But... I'm okay with God. Why is that helping me? All right? What does righteousness mean, God? I'm not understanding this. Here's another theory. Adam messed up, Jesus fixed it, and then I was born. I just need to know that something happened before me, but it's okay now. How about this one? Righteousness is a big word, and it has right in it, and I'm not right on somehow. I'm not right, so somehow I need to try to be like Jesus. You know, righteousness, I need to be right. I need to be, I need to, he says I'm righteous, but, you know, I don't feel right. How many of you, you know, feel right? Yeah, I know. It's depending on the pizza, depending on the day, depending on your hormonal cycle. Yes, I said that. Uh, righteousness is a vague word along with sanctification. Hey, what about that? Propituation, redemption. And I need to say these words once in a while to let people know that I really know something. <laughs> know. Righteousness. Oh, wow, she knows something. <laughs> I got it. I am clueless and really don't care, but probably should. <laughs> oh, why don't we just really find out what righteousness is? 
Because you know what? It's really awesome. When we break it down and we see how he says it and what he does about it. Oh, it's awesome. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.21. It's on the first page. This is talking about Jesus. For he has made him, this is Jesus, to be sin for us. So I remind you, I'm just going to briefly, Romans 5.19 says this. For by one man's offense, what Adam did, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by one man's obedience, many should be made righteous. So Adam did with Eve, along with that, by one man's act of disobedience, then we were born into a sin nature. But by one act of obedience, then we've been brought into righteousness. All right, so let's go back to this. So, for he hath made him, that's Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, so that we might be, listen, made the righteousness of God in him. Now, when you look up that word made, it's really the title of this message. It means to cause to be, to be assembled. He has made us, he's caused us to be assembled in him because of what Jesus did. Then we have been made to be caused to be assembled into the righteousness. Listen, the rightness of God has been made available for me. I was, I have here, I was born again into this position, and that's not really accurate because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I was born again to access this position. That would be a better way of saying it. When I became born again, all things have passed away, behold, all things are new. I became a new creation, all right? So with that, I've been made righteous. I've been assembled into the righteousness of God. Well, let me tell you something. I was assembled into my mother's womb. And when I was born, they did not look at me and go, Oh, that's a sweet, darling little girl. I tell you what, listen, little Cindy, my first name. Listen, Don, if you don't wake us up at night and you walk real early, then maybe we'll let you be a hooper, which was my maiden name. I was born, listen, I was assembled, I was made a hooper. Born with the name. Did you get this? Thank you. I was born with the name H-O-O-P-E-R. It's my name, my maiden name. I was born a hooper. I didn't ask for it. I was made to be one. It was assembled. Boom. I didn't have to earn it. I was just born a hooper. Didn't matter whether I wanted to be or not, but I am what I am. Now, my brothers, you might want to turn that off, Mom. My brothers were hellions. They were wild. I was best stayed at home, perfect hooper. But my brothers, they, they were just partiers and they got drunk and they, well, let me finish the rest of the story. I know, hold on. I'm going to finish it. It turns out good, people. They're both in the ministry. They're doing great. Great, so everything came out fine. But back then, they were hellions. They Bless my mom and dad's heart, ran after them all over the place. Partied and got drunk and got arrested. I know, but it's true. I know you're saying, why are you telling them that? Read me the rest of the story. But even at their worst, even at their worst, listen, they were still hoopers. They had the name. They were born into the name Hooper. And no matter how bad they were, they were still hoopers. And I'm going to tell you something. No matter how bad you are, you were born or made into the name righteousness. You can't earn it. Can't be good enough. You can't be, listen, you can't be bad enough. If you cussed before you came in here, and I hope you didn't, 
But if you did do that, when, when you cussed, you were still righteous. The last time you blew it, you're still righteous. God never withdraws what he made and assembled. When he made and assembled you, he put him in you. You have his nature. Listen, his ability. Now, whether you walk in it, but let me tell you something. You got it. You have the ability because, listen, it's in you. You walking around trying to prove something, trying to be smart enough, good enough, and God says, I've made you. I've made you. I've assembled you, and I put my nature into you. You are righteous. It's a position that was given, and I don't have to know how to, but I have to know how to use it. That's the key. I have to know how to use it. I've been made, but what have I been given? In Ephesians, it says this. This is what Paul prayed for the churches. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling. And listen, he is praying this because he wants the church to get. This is all about the righteousness of God. All right? He said, I, I may know what is the hope of your calling. What is the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Listen, when he wrought in Christ, here it is, we're starting to get in here, we're starting to see us. When he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, now listen, he sat him on his own right hand in heavenly places. When you sit in the heavenlies, that is, that is the, the uh, symbol of authority. And also, listen, it the, it's the, it's also means it's finished. It means it's done. God don't have to keep saving you. Praise God. Even when you mess up. So when he is seated with God on his right hand, then it is finished and the work's been done and the authority's been given. Listen, far above all principalities and power. You just need to remember that because you're going to be using it in just a little bit. You need to remember. Far above all principalities of power, might and dominion, above every name, he has been given authority and dominion over every name. Every name. Every name. Now, where are we? I'm so glad you asked. Ephesians, listen to this. But God, who is rich in his mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us, has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And has raised us up together and made, there it is, made, assembled us to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So there's God and there's Jesus. And then where are we? Right here. In Him. I don't care what you've done or what you're going to do. Doesn't move God. He's assembled you. He's put, listen, what was in God is in Jesus, is in me. I've been assembled. I am the product of my mom and dad. I have their attributes. I'm telling you, I'm like them. You put a hooker in a room. You put them in there. Listen, you're talking about caloric people. Leader, 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 leader. I mean, it, it, it is in our genes to be leaders. And so when we get us all in a room, we're going to lead somebody. Even if it's to the potato salad, we're going to lead somebody. Because it's just in us. I've been assembled. I am them together in a greater way because if they're caloric, oh, my dad's pretty caloric. I love you. So we're going to be, we're going to lead something. We also got this creative gene. Listen, we, we're in real estate. My dad made millions in real estate. So we'd probably try to sell you something because we're, it's just in our nature because that's, that's part of who I am. And I'm telling you what, 
the hoopers have an anointing for money. Um, if you stay in the room long enough with us, someone is going to figure out how to make a million dollars because that is what they do, and they're still doing it because it's in my nature. I've been assembled. I'm a part of them, and, I'm, and it, it is. It comes out. In fact, it's from glory to glory, from generation to generation. My granddaughter... If, if my dad's caloric and I'm caloric, she is caloric, caloric, caloric. More than once, they've came to us while she's in the nursery uh, or children's church and they said, uh, Kennedy's trying to take over the class. <laughs> and I go, yes, that's my granddaughter. <laughs> that's that pre-assembling stuff in there trying to make room that needs to be tempered. Listen, she got a bad mark at school with a note sent home that they had to sign. Because when they was eating, and it's her regular, you know, like the, the, the cafeteria, while she's eating, she decides she wants to leave the whole cafeteria. So she gets up on the table, and she starts telling everybody, like she's Donald Trump, like she's the president. So she's telling everybody. You know what that is? The assembly inside of her is wanting to make room because she's born of our nature. You know what? You're born of the nature of God. You have the ability, listen, to be kind. You may not be, you know, you may not act it, but let me tell you something. You're assembled with the ability to be kind because, listen, like Father God, like Jesus, you're like them. You've been made a symbol. The very nature of them is in you. Now listen, Philemon says this. The official, let's see, the, the, the communication or our faith would be, effectual, would be effective by the acknowledging of every good thing in us. Do you get that? The communication or our faith would be effective. That means my faith would become effective if I start acknowledging what is inside of me. So even if you've just cussed before you came in, I don't know why I keep saying that. But if your shoe fits, don't wear it. But even if you did that, one of you just totally messed up. I'm going to tell you something. Guilt and condemnation, it will, listen, it will, you cannot take hold of righteousness with a sense of guilt. You're by, listen, the nature that's in God is the nature that's in Jesus, is the nature that's in me. And listen, righteousness is this, to not have any sense of guilt. Sin consciousness. Oh, I messed up so, I messed up. We all messed up. But that doesn't take me out of my righteousness, my right standing, my assembly that I have inside of me. It doesn't, listen, it does not disqualify me. Because, you hear it, Pastor? He is my righteousness. I have, he, he takes on. He is. I'm in him. So, listen, righteousness. I want you to get a picture of it. I want you to get a picture of it because we're fixing to do something with it, okay? You've got to see it in righteousness, not any sense of, I messed up today. Mm -mm. He said, how much more the blood of Jesus through the eternal spirit who offered himself without spot cleanse us from dead works to serve the living God his love, his ability is far greater than your mistakes. While we were yet sinners, what? He died for me. When we were the worst, he still gave himself. I, I cannot disqualify myself. Now listen, I can move out of the position and not take access it, but listen, I am still righteous. Now to access it, to own it, for it to have the ability, for it to work. Now listen, because righteousness works for me if I work my righteousness. Listen, as a child, 
I did not get the benefits of all that my mom had and my dad had for me. But when I grew up, there were cars and there were horses and there was many things that I got to take hold of because I grew up and I received and took hold of those benefits. When are you going to grow up? Because there's benefits, there's power, there's deliverance, there's healing and righteousness. Because I, listen, here I am. Not any sense of how bad I am or what I've done or any sense of being intimidated by, oh, no, no, I'm of him. You know what? When I'm with my mom and dad, I'm not, oh, dad, oh, dad, oh. That's how you're not supposed to be with father. You're born of his nature, his ability, not any sense of feeling in fear. I want you to see yourself. Come on, see yourself. Can I be right by Jesus, my brother, firstborn of many brethren? Can I be right by him? And I'm, I'm like, okay. Not, oh. You know, in the Old Testament, when the glory came, when people met the presence of God, they would fall on their knees and they would say, I'm a man of unclean lips because the glory and the presence of God, it would reveal where they're not. But we are not, listen, we are not in the Old Testament. We have been made. We've been assembled with his nature inside of me. So I need to own it and acknowledge it that I have him with me. Not any sense of what I've done wrong. I'm going to tell you something else. Not any sense of what others has done wrong. You want to just, like, cut off accessing that righteousness? Start blaming and guilting and accusing. So here I am. Okay, here I am. Not any sense of blowing it. Have you blown it? Well, sure. So what does sin do? The sin is missing the mark. How does sin affect righteousness? I'm glad you asked. It hinders you being able to access it because of, listen, this is what sin brings in. Listen, sin brings in guilt, condemnation, the accuser of the brethren, blame, and shame. It opens access to demonic activities because they, because listen, when you sin, you give place to the devil. And what does he bring in? He brings in guilt, condemnation, blame, and shame. The accuser of the red, you, you dirty rotten. How did you even think that you would be like it? Look, you can't even go two hours without you. You'll never amount to anything. That's what that brings in. While we was yet sinners, while I blew it totally, God never withdrew. God made me righteous. Sin just clouds it, hinders. There it is, right there it is, there it is. But now listen, First John 1, 9. If you confess your faults, he's faithful enough to forgive your faults and cleanse you. It just, listen, it cleanses the air. I want you to see yourself no matter what you've done. Listen, no matter, God knows what you're going to do next year. I mean, if you, if, if you, if, if you were going to blow it next year and, and he knew it, he knew the last person that hit the electric chair and he knew that they were going to murder people. Get this. Get how much he loves us. He knew that he was going to murder them. The day before, his love was still there. His love was still there. He assembled us. Now, when I asked him to come into my life, 
then I become a new creature. Behold, all things are new. Now I've got him in me. I've been reconnected back to him. Now I can access, listen, the position. But while we were yet sinners, listen, he never withdrew his love from us. So here I am. Can you see yourself? I mean, I'm asking you to think about this. Could I be sitting by Jesus and not thinking how bad I am? Could I be sitting by him and going, you know what? How about this? I belong here. I belong here. Because, now listen, I'm sitting. It didn't say I was standing. It would be a whole different ballgame. He said, I'm seated with him. Seating is authority. I, listen, you need to get this. I've been given authority. I'm seated with him with authority. Because this is how Jesus is. This is how God is. And I'm just like them. Now listen. Let's go to page two. What keeps us... Th this is the thing that has um, awakened me to righteousness. Because it says, wake up, O Zion. What keeps us from owning our righteousness? Now listen, Philippians 3, 9, and 10. And be found in him, look, not having my own righteousness which is of law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. See, it's easy for us to try to me, have my own right, for me to try to feel good about myself, by me trying to control people, for me trying to, you know, have to one-up people, for me trying to, you need to look at me, and for me trying to work out myself, for me trying to put law in, that I have to do something because it's something in us that just wants to do something in order for us to get something. It's called our own righteousness. And let me tell you, every single one of us in here have to fight that. Why? Because we have a devil. And we've got also the carnal mind that has to be renewed. You don't have to earn it. You've been given that. Here's the good news. You don't have to prove yourself to others. You don't have to try to figure it out. You don't have to try to control others so you feel better about yourself. You don't have to try to work out I, me being okay. Because every one of us came out needing to be okay. And we had to grow up into what we've been given. So the thing that's going to keep me from, I'm righteous and I'm, I'm, and I'm not intimidated or any sort, is that me trying to think, I've got to do something in order for God to move for me. i got to do something in order for God. i got to do something in order for God to do something for me. And it's called the law. Let's go to Matthew 16. <clears throat> That's good. Matthew 16 says this. I want to bring you up to remember when Jesus said, Who do men say they are? Say that I am. They say Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And remember Peter said, Thou art Christ, Son of the living God. And Jesus said, uh, Bless are thou by far, uh, Jonah by far and you, because Jonah by, what is it? Simon by Jonah. Thank you. Thank you. Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but God. And so then he said that you shall, upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then he said this. Now listen, because I'm getting to a point. So I give unto you the keys to the kingdom. Now listen, 
Keys represent authority. It opens doors, closes doors. I'm giving unto you the authority to the kingdom that whatever you shall bind on earth that's already been bound in heaven, I will move for you. And whatever you loose on earth that's already been loosed in heaven, I will move for you. And so we had a revelation. Listen, we had a revelation of righteousness, of what God has done for us and who God is for us. Now, when that he had that revelation, then Jesus started going and telling what they must do, that they're going to have, that he's going to have to die and be raised again. And then that's when Peter and his self-righteousness stepped in because back then they thought that Christ was going to come down for an earthly kingdom at the very beginning, and so it was all about me. And so, Jesus, and so Peter rebuked Jesus. As bad as that is, um, let's don't open the skeleton in your closet. So Peter rebuked Jesus and said, No, Master, no, that's not how it should be. And so here we are when Jesus says and turns to Peter and says, Get behind me, Satan. You are a fence to me, for you're not, on the mindful, you're not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. So say, listen, between the revelation of what Peter had and when he started walking and Jesus started talking to him, Satan entered Peter, were used by Peter, spoke through Peter against Jesus. Why? Because Now listen, because every one of us fights this. It's common to man. He says, get behind me for thou offense to me. For listen, you mind the things of man rather than the things of God. That's our righteousness. That's what about me? What's in it for me? It's easy to be in the ministry. and Some this or that or you working and something. And, and then everything that God's doing or reflecting is what is it in for me? What about me? How does that affect me? Because that we came out with that mindfulness of our own righteousness. Now listen, this is what God said. This is what Jesus said. I'm driving up to a point. If anyone desires, that would be, would that be y'all? I mean, if, or anyone in here? If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In other words... I need to get me out of the formula. Because it's not how life is affecting me. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about I've been given a position of righteousness, and it's not like what's in it for me. It's about not my will. Look, but thy will be done. Listen what, listen what Jesus said. I'm fixing, I'm fixing to give you a key that can set you free. But I got to give you a foundation, so don't go to Walmart right now. You have to hear this. Because you, I, there is power in righteousness. There is power that we own, but we're not using because we're too mindful of what about me? How's it affecting me? And this is what Jesus said. If you want to follow, listen, if you want to follow me, if you want to walk in that righteousness, he who does righteousness is the one that's righteous. If you want to walk in this, what I've assembled you and given you, this is how you're going to do it. This is how you're going to do it. Because anything else, if you get self up here, you're going to start being intimidated. You're going to start to be, you're going to have to start, what about me? What's it? All those things, it's going to be about you. And I'm going to tell you, it's not about you. It is about the kingdom of God. Listen, in you. It's about the kingdom of God in you. It's about you being assembled with him in you. He's the main show. He is the show. I'm hidden. Listen, I died. To, I died and I'm hidden in him. Now, what am I dying to? My opinions, my feelings, my how I see it, how I think it ought to be done. Uh, Pastor Jay, he's doing it different than I. 
I didn't like what I ate tonight. It looked good. Listen, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life, that life is suitcase. That's your feelings. That's your emotions. That's all those feelings. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. <gasps> your soul. We're talking about your soul. Because, listen, the devil can get your can reach your soul. Can reach your soul. Because we're in this world. He's the God of this world. He can affect your soul. But when I take myself out of the formula, no soul, when I say, not my will, but thy will, God, I am going to mind the things of you and your kingdom, and it's not going to be about what I want or how I see it. God, I surrender to you. I'm taking myself out of this. I just assemble the Spirit of God inside of me. And listen, I become, 1 John 5, untouchable. He cannot touch me because I'm out of the formula. I'm in him. It's God and the devil. Go get him. Go get him. Because our soul is not getting in here and got all feelings and got all got to prove my got to do and that makes sense. All right. No sin conscious toward me, listen, or others. Because when it's about you, then when it's not about you, you can't get offended. Have y'all noticed that? Cannot get offended. It says, oh, no ought to anybody. That means unforgiveness. That means, that means this. Pastor Jay, just stand up just for a moment. I just want to use you because you're like a rock. Okay. <clears throat> Good illustration. To have no ought, that means not to have. I, I use this. Anything. Do you want to have authority over diseases? Yes. Do you want to have a... Uh, uh, riches from from heaven down here. Will you do this? Because I'm telling you, you take you out of the formula, God's in it. Have no all. That means nothing. Nothing between me and whoever. Not even something that. And I'm going to tell you, some of the hardest it is, is those spouses you live with. You can sit down, Pastor Jay. I mean, they walk across the room, yeah, I don't like that. Get a bunch of papers. Is it not? Am I the only one here? Mom, is it not true? Isn't it? Is it not? When, when they, they're not responding the way you want them. There, I've got, I've got a little witness over here. They're not responding the way. They should know by now how I feel about it. They should know. They should know by now how I feel. What is that about, people? That is about self-righteousness. And how's that, listen, how's that working for you? How's that working for you? I mean, have you, are, you, are you loaded? Are you healthy? How's those kids off? How are those kids doing? Then maybe you need to listen. Because I'm telling you, a key to the kingdom, if you'll take yourself out of it. I think 1 John 1, 9, Lord, forgive me. I have operated in, uh, about me. And God, I was assembled to be like you. So, Father, forgive me where I failed you in this. From here on, God... Listen, from here on, it's all about you. It's about kingdom work, and you tell me what to do. So when I'm tempted, and I listen, as long as you're on this earth, you're going to be tempted. When they walk across the room wrong, you've got the Holy Spirit right there with you going, who's this about? Who's this about? 
Is this about you? And they didn't do it right. They probably never will because as long as you're looking to them to meet your needs, then they never will. Because I made you righteous. My abilities inside of you. You look to me. But I have found this out because I've prayed this. It sticks. I, I'm telling you, I, I, it sticks. I'm so kingdom conscious. And when I'm tempted, it's like, oh, I'm in righteousness. No, I've been assembled. It's not about me anymore. God, what are you doing? Because that's what I want to be doing. Now listen. I'm now in the position to fight. I've led all this up to this. I've led everything up to it's about time you own your power and take back the stuff that the devil has stolen from you. I'm now in the position to fight. I'm now ready, listen, to do righteousness. Because righteousness is not just a word. It is doing his kingdom work with boldness because it's not about me. Listen, righteousness is the ability to stand in the presence of God without feeling inferior, condemned, or sin conscious. Have y'all got that? knowing it's not my will, but his will being done. Now listen, here's the next sentence, and this is what has set me free. This has changed my whole mentality. Now listen, righteousness is the ability to stand in the presence of sickness, disease, and poverty without feeling inferior, condemned, or sin consciousness. You're to face that, and you're to say, sickness, you bow in Jesus' name. Poverty, you bow in Jesus' name. Devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you leave my kids alone. Because listen, it's not about me. This is about kingdom work. This is about God beating Satan up. I'm just his voice down here. And if he can't touch me with feelings and opinions and all this bunk, then I don't, I don't feel in or drawn back or oh the big bad word the big bad C word bow to me you cancer you bow to me you sickness I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus I am not to look at poverty and go oh how am I going to get out of it no that's self righteousness it's like poverty you bow because I'm with him I'm assembled with his nature his ability. I look for things to cause to bow. Well, I'm, he said he went about to destroy the works of the devil. You know what? We're still down here doing it. That's why David, listen, ran to Goliath. You don't wait till that stuff comes on you. You run. You uncircumcised heathen, poverty, sickness, disease. I'm running after you. I'm chasing you. You're not coming after me. I'm coming after you. You bow in Jesus' name. That's not how we need to look at it. And when it's not about me, I got his power, his ability. Take me out of the formula. We're in a war. If you find out we're in a war, I want to finish with this. I want to finish on time. Romans 1, 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Listen. Don't you be ashamed. Don't you draw back. He has no pleasure for those that draw back. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's about time. For I'm not ashamed of the good news so I'm telling you tonight, good news. For it is the power of God. I'm telling you people, you've got power inside of you. 
You get yourself out of it. You own your position. You see yourself in him. There is power to change your situation, to change those kids, to change that checkbook, to change that, that, that pain in your body. You have it. Listen, if this is just halfway done and, and God just halfway shows up, ugh, who wants that? If he says there's power, he means there's power. His power, his ability, whatever I bind on earth that is bound in heaven, he moves, he makes it happen. It's the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, I'll give up my flesh, my flesh, feelings, what I think about it, my cocking and attitude, and I don't think they did it right, or whatever else that you're working on, give it up. You've been assembled with him inside of you. And listen, he has to have his body down here doing. He needs you to go cast out devils and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He needs us to do that. And when I'm not concerned about me, I can hear him so much more. Like, oh, okay, do this. It's very loud. It's very loud. And when I blow it, it's loud. And it's easier. Listen, it's, when you blow it and you don't even know you're blowing it, woo. But when you blow it and you go, oh, I blew it. You're first on one night, the air becomes really clean inside. And now I'm reigning in my righteousness. It's not about me. I'm taking orders. What do I need to run to? What Goliath do you need to call down today, God? Well, why don't you call down the ones that are facing you? You get out of the way and listen to God, how God tells you to do it. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things. All of these things. We'll be at all of these things. The kingdom of God is where? In me, baby. In you. Every one of you is sitting on dynamite. And I'm asking you to sit in your heavenly place and quit being intimidated by this whatever you came in here with. Because every one of you came in here with a problem. Bow! You run to that thing. You run after that disease. You run after that poverty. You talk to that checkbook. God is needing us. He's looking for the mature sons of God. The earth is grown. He says the earth groans for the revealing. The, you know what? The Brownwood is groaning for you to speak life to it. You need to speak life to your checkbook, life to your car. Your car needs to hear you speak life to it. Words, power, dominion. Now listen, that's called righteousness. That's what that means. I've been assembled to be just like him. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You're going to have some of that world stuff coming. But don't sit there and let it draw back. You run toward that. You run. One more scripture. First Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not in word, It's time that we have more power. More power operating in our life. And I have the ability to do it. And if, it, if, if it's something as simple as not my will but thy will, God, I, it's not about me. It's not about my opinion. Not, it's not about my righteousness. It's not about they looked at me wrong. It's not about whatever your flesh likes to do, kill it. You know what God says to do to flesh? Reckon it dead. Crucify. Don't try to justify. 
One of my mom and dad's like that. It, you've been assembled to have his power. Don't you justify. Listen, anytime you justify, you're wrong. You know what I mean? You blame, you're wrong. His ability, his power. Go out there and slay some dragons spiritually. Because there's principalities and powers every day in our life, in the air. God's needing for you to call it down. God's needing you to speak life into a dark place. We're the light of the hill. We're the light on the hill. Just be. Be be bold. Do you hear what Pastor's saying? It's true. Remember, yeah. It, but listen, you can have power. The difference between I can have power inside of me, I'm feeling, uh, uh, but it will sit there until you. You know the difference between someone who knows they're here. I know what they're. But I listened to Brother Jay. He's talking about healing and sign of God all that. You know, and the one who who experiences the healing power of God is that you can know it, but until you act on it, it sits dormant. And you can have all this power, and you know, but if you just sit there and you just go through the motion, I get up, I go to work. I go back home, I go to bed, I get up. Get out of yourself. Do you hear, Pastor? Listen, I double-dog guarantee you before you get out of here, you're going to need to get healed. We're in a body that's trying to decay on us, but I tell my body every day what it's going to do. Every day. This thing is going to be preserved. I'm ready to go, and I'm not going to be sick, and I'm not going to be in no nursing home. I'm not going to have all that. I'm probably going to have this real pretty, no-wrinkled face because he's going to come back, or this has got to be not spot or wrinkled. I mean, that's my confession. See me, see me, see me. Y'all learn something tonight? All right. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you that the power of God lives inside each and every one of us. And, Father, I thank you that, Father, you've caused us to go and do great exploits. And, Father, right now, I declare we will. In Jesus' name, amen.